driver market has always been a fickle thing in Formula One. We have seen amazing decisions like Lewis Hamilton moving to Mercedes in 2013, just before the team became the most dominant in history. To poor moves like when Nigel Mansell moved to the American IndyCar Series, only to move back to Williams two years later where he didn't live up to Damon Hill's performance, was dropped for David Coulthard the next year, and relegated himself to not fitting in the 95 McLaren due to fatness, then retired to groom his mustache and play golf. Driver signings were a bit more simple in the recent past. Main points for luring a driver to a team where I give money and my car fast. I mean, Eddie Jordan was able to obtain drivers, so it couldn't have been that hard to do. One such acquisition by Eddie was Bertrand Gachot. Gachot was sent to prison mid-season for attacking a taxi driver. And replaced for the Belgian Grand Prix by Michael Schumacher. Not sure how Eddie landed that one, but opportunities abound in the 90s. Silly season. These days, more detail is placed on the driver market. So much so that moves and signings are planned months, sometimes years in advance. The abandoning of one seat leads to drivers hopping from one team to another, leading to a domino effect known as silly season. Silly season is the media's reporting on these dealings, which historically happened in the off-season, with little to no regard for actual journalism. Clickbait after clickbait on who is moving where, eventually culminating in no one actually having any idea what the f*** is going on. Upon doing research for this video, I found out that silly season is a very old term. It started in England in the 1800s to describe summer, when parliament and courts were not in session, and frivolous news reports filled the papers to make up for it. This normally describes silly season in F1 exactly. But things have somehow destabilized. Silly season is no longer in the off season. It has got out of hand. I can't remember exactly when it got stupid. But if I had to take a guess, it was started by Red Bull. They dropped Gasly for Albon in 2019, midway through the season which sparked rumors of driver moves even before the end of the 2019 season. Now this isn't to say drivers haven't moved mid-season before. Hell, drivers used to die on a semi-regular basis back in the day and would be replaced before their ashes could even be collected by their loved ones. So yeah, Red Bull. They did it again the following year with Albon, ditching him for Perez at the end of the 2020 season. But it's gone to a new level in recent years. Lewis Hamilton has recently decided to move to Ferrari before the season has started, before testing has started, before he has even got a look at where anyone was for 2024. Silly season for 2025 started before silly season for 2024 ended. As well, we have drivers moving to teams before they have even formed. Nico Hulkenberg has moved to Sauber for next year in the anticipation of it turning into Audi for 2026. We have reached silly season inception. Audi is the first spanner in the works for the recent driver's market. The anticipation for Audi is very high. For those of you who don't know, Audi wins pretty much everywhere they go. WBC, Le Mans, Group B, etc, etc, etc. This outfit is highly desirable and will replace what we can only be said to be a lower end team for the Sauber Group. But most are a bit skeptical of their performance right out of the gate, as the only team to have their virgin year be a win on the grid was Braun GP, and that was a very, very special case, one that could be a whole video on its own. 
Red Bull is in a bit of a weird place right now. Horner has come under scrutiny after he was caught texting a female co-worker inappropriate things. But more importantly, Adrian Newey is leaving the team at the end of the year. And at the British GP, the Red Bulls kinda looked third fastest. On top of that, for 2026, Red Bull will switch from Honda engines to Red Bull powertrains, backed by at least some degree by Ford. An energy drinks company and an engine manufacturer whose last endeavor in F1 was with Jaguar 20 years ago. Things don't look that promising. As well, the Verstappen family, Joss mostly, and Horner haven't been getting along. And it looks like Max will jump ship in 2026, maybe even earlier, if one, the car seems to drop off in performance, and two, things break down even further between his family and the Red Bull team principal. Alpine looks like it may be powered by something other than a Renault engine for 2026. Rumors are spreading about a switch to Mercedes engines. This seems like a fairy tale to think a French team would be powered by a German engine. Don't mention the war. Don't mention the war. But Renault's slow pullback from the sports since powering Red Bull to success in the early 2010s is quite apparent. First the name change away from Renault, then some of the worst PR moves in recent history, a next step would be removing the engine from the mix, which only power the Alpine team currently. Eventually, we would assume their natural progression is to back out of the sport entirely in the near future. This leaves the team in an odd place, as it would potentially be more desirable with the Merck engine, as Mercedes powertrains have been stronger than Renault since 2014. Budget caps have also played a big part in the driver market. Let's take McLaren, for example. In 2011, the company spent 151 million pounds during the year. A little more when you consider its cross-development happening with their advanced technologies arm. Times 1.5 to USD for that year gets you 238 million. With inflation, 320 million in today's money. The budget cap is 135 million in 2024. And the driver's salaries don't count in that figure. When we figure that in 2011 McLaren wasn't even the top spending team, most, if not all, the teams today can afford to spend huge amounts of money on their drivers, where in the past it was divided between development. Not only that, but the ratio of payout versus cost is much more equal than in the past, meaning almost all the teams run in the black in some way, hence the valuation of each team being insane with relation to the performance. This also has a trickle-down effect that if you have tens of millions to spend on your drivers, you can cancel their contracts at a whim, with almost no effect on your bottom line. See Daniel Ricardo exit from McLaren. The opposite is also true. If you know that your team can sign very lucrative contracts, you can afford to break yours and move teams as a driver. See Hamilton moving to Ferrari, even though he was contracted to Merck until 2025. The breakdown right now looks like this. Most of the spots for 2025 have been filled, but the driver market still remains to be locked down for the last season of the current engine regulations. We know a few positions that are confirmed and are believed to be rock solid for 2025 and sometimes beyond. Ferrari has Leclerc until 2029. It assumes there are multiple clauses on such a long and unprecedented contract, and Hamilton has an unknown contract length, but it's believed to be until 2027. Austin Martin signs Stroll locked in until his dad gives up on him, and Alonso seems to be on a multi-year deal assumed to 2026, maybe even more. Finally, McLaren have Nordis till 2025, but has recently announced an unknown extension to the new regs of 2026. Also, Piastri is extended until 2026, however, a further right to retain is believed to exist. Mercedes have confirmed Russell, at least until 2025, with the option to retain beyond. Sauber slash Audi have Nico Hülkenberg as a current unknown contract length, and it is assumed to be until the end of 2026. Haas have signed Ollie Berman for a multi-year deal starting in 2025. Whether it's a 1 plus 1 is unknown. The Alpine outfit have an unknown contract length for Gatsley, but is beyond 2025 assumed at least 2026 as a plus 1. Racing Bulls have Sonona until 2026 with an assumed 1 plus 1. Albon is locked in with Williams for a long-term deal to 2026 with plus one in the cards. 
That leaves Red Bull, Merck, Sauber, Audi, Haas, Williams, Alpine, and RB to lock in their full driver sets. Yes, yes, I know, Red Bull technically have their drivers locked in, but we'll get to that soon. First, we need to look at who's left on the table, including new and outside drivers trying to break into the market. New boys in contention are Antonelli, highly touted as the next big star in F1. He hasn't been winning outright in F2 this year, but still seems to be the favorite as a Mercedes Junior. Dewan has been sitting as a reserve driver for a while at Alpine now, with many tests but not being able to secure a drive yet. Hadjar, great in F2, but has only seen a few tests for Red Bull. Lawson drove for Red Bull's second team for five races, replacing Ricardo, who had broken his hand. He impressed many and even scored points. Current drivers left, Botas, Magnussen, Ocon, Sargent, and Ricardo all seem like they are able to get a drive for 2025, but anything into the new relate regulations is kind of out of their reach right now. And the keystone drivers are Carlos Sainz, Max Verstappen, and Perez. Max and Perez are very conditional, so let's talk about Carlos first. Carlos Sainz has been an underrated and highly talented driver his whole career. Currently, he is the keystone in the driver's market. He's a much better driver to be working at Williams or Haas. But most of the top teams are outside his reach. He's a weird driver that is probably the best number two you could have, but a little bit too good and he may outperform your number one. Carlos doesn't want to take a seat at a lower team with openings at Mercedes, Red Bull, and Alpine. Merck looks to be back on form as of late. Red Bull is his junior team from years past, and Alpine may have an engine deal with Mercedes lined up so they can be in a better place for 2026. Maxi and Red Bull aren't looking like the dominant force they once were. Certainly their future as the team to beat has been put into question. In 2026, they don't seem to have a very good outlook either. With Newey gone, their aero department will most likely suffer, and their switch to in-house engine is a complete unknown. This leaves the most dominant force right now, Max or Stappen, with a choice. If to stick it out or move on a risk with one of the other teams getting the 2026 regs right. Prez is also in a transitioning phase. He hasn't been performing, and he looks like he may fall to the same Red Bull shenanigans as Gasly and Albon. Could he be dropped, leaving a very desirable seat open for the likes of Sainz or even Ricardo? What if they lost both drivers in an upset of the century, firing Perez and then later losing Max at the end of the year? I don't expect things to start falling into place until the summer break, after the Belgian Grand Prix. Summer break is a mini silly season within the regular silly season, so expect reporting to be on high alert. Thanks for joining me as we pondered over the current driver market and silly season. Show me your support with a like and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.